Hello again, this is Michael Whitaker. This is photo post number 10 of the 21 photo post I'm doing on LinkedIn and sharing on Facebook. The topic for this post is groundwork and good fortune. The photo I'm using for this post is simply entitled Four Giraffes. It is from my series Behind the Scenes at the Prague Zoo. The purpose of these videos is to discuss what was going on in my head when I captured uh, specific images. So tonight we're looking at what was going on in my head when I captured four giraffes. As you will see, not a lot was going on in my head for this photograph. As background, during my first career in social psychology, I started, implemented, and managed 17 different projects of my own. I also did an additional 35 projects uh, for other agencies and entities. So I have a lot of experience doing projects. Uh, I learned a long time ago that a very strong foundation very strong groundwork for a project takes care of a lot of issues. During my first career, part of my time was spent working with very dangerous youth, murder, rape, armed robbery, aggravated assault, and that sort of thing. So I could not afford not to have a real good foundation for each of my projects. So I believed that I had to do all the groundwork. I had to put everything together uh, for the purpose of trying to avoid any difficulties. In social psychology, doing programs for uh, troubled youth, uh, there's a lot of issues. But the biggest issue is that the best predictor of future behavior is past behaviors. So when I put together projects, I looked at the whole range of past behaviors and I tried to address all the potential behaviors I thought uh, we might encounter in a program of that nature. My motto back then was no surprises. I did not want to leave anything to chance because when things are left to chance, people end up getting hurt. Uh, after I retired from my first career for a year or so. I had my own corporation uh, where I did trainings for uh, non-social services people. And as part of that training, uh, I offered CEUs, continuing education units, for people who attended my training. Once I gave a speech out in California at a CEU conference uh, in San Francisco, and uh, during that speech, I made the comment, you know, my philosophy is leave nothing to chance, no surprises. After I finished my speech and the session broke up, this uh, man came over to talk to me. He introduced himself. He was from Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida. And he said he was fascinated by my approach to leave nothing to chance because that is one of the themes of Walt Disney World. You leave nothing to chance. And he gave me some wonderful examples. Uh, about a year later, I received a personal behind the scene tours with him, a tour of Disney World with him. And sure enough, they leave nothing to chance. So when I got into photography as my second career and I started doing photo projects, I still held that concept in my head, no surprises. I need to, lead, I need to lay a very strong foundation uh, for every project so that I can minimize the disruption or the negative consequences or anything like that. So when I began the project, which I entitled Behind the Scenes at the Prague Zoo, I did extensive groundwork. I laid extensive foundation, did a lot of research. Then I went to the zoo and I met with the administrators and then they set me up to meet with the managers of each of the habitats. Uh, a lot of times in zoos, they'll refer to the areas where the animals live as the animal ha habitat. 
So I met with those. The number one issue throughout all the meetings was safety. They wanted me to be safe, which I was uh, appreciated. They wanted the animals to be safe, and they wanted the zoo employees to be safe. So a big issue was safety, and I was all for that. So I launched into the project. The day that I was photographing the giraffes, the keeper at the giraffe habitat walked me in, unlocked this gate, this big, huge gate, opened it. We walked through. He turned around and locked it again. And I realized we were in an enclosure with four giraffes. I looked around and I saw the giraffes. They saw me and they immediately came over to me and basically lined up. Uh, if you look at this picture closely, you'll see the fourth giraffe is departing the, the, the field of view here. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But there I was standing with these giant giraffes. They're huge. And I was a bit intimidated, but I thought, you know, I'm going to lose myself in the photographs. They were lined up perfectly. So I raised my camera to start to take a photograph. The minute I raised my camera, the giraffe on the right in this, image is, in this image reaches down and tries to lick my camera. Uh, I was using a Nikon F5. I'm very protective of my cameras. So I immediately got my camera out of the way, got it completely out of the way, at which point there was nothing to lick, and he licked the front of my shirt. I said he. I'm not sure if it's a male or a female. But the giraffe licked the front of my shirt. It was a long, huge tongue dripping with saliva. So suddenly I had all this saliva over the front of my shirt. But I knew he had to retract his tongue, so I got ready to raise my camera and capture the next capture an image this time. And the giraffe beat me to it. Tried to lick my camera again, but again got the front of my shirt. Four times total, this giraffe tried to lick my camera but instead got the front of my shirt. After four licks, my shirt was literally soaking wet with saliva. With giraffes, that is not a neutral smell. So it was a very difficult situation. And if you look closely at this image, you can see the giraffe has his tongue poised right there at the edge of his mouth and could uh, lick me again any time. So after the giraffe licked me the fourth time, I quickly raised my camera and exposed two uh, frames of film before the giraffe tried to lick me again. I was satisfied with two frames, so I got out of the way so he did not get to lick the front of my shirt a fifth time. I did wonderful groundwork for this project. I laid great foundations, but it never occurred to me that I would have an up-close and personal interaction with a giraffe. That just never entered my mind. In my wildest imagination, I never thought there'd be this giraffe standing there trying to lick my camera, but licking me instead. Luckily, my foundation was good enough that I was able to compensate. But my point is, if you, if you lay a good enough foundation, uh, there's probably going to be problems. Uh, sometimes the groundwork is good and the experiences are negative. In this situation, the groundwork was good and I ran into good fortune. And I say good fortune because this image here on the slide uh, has been presented, has been hung in several gallery shows. And this is one of my uh, most often uh, purchased photographs. So what was a very messy situation with me, I smelled so bad I was embarrassed to ride the trolley back to where I was staying. So I had a long walk home smelling the giraffe saliva on my shirt. But this negative situation, or this potentially negative situation, uh, gave me the opportunity to capture two images or expose two frames of film. And the image you have before you uh, was an image that has so impressed people, I've sold it multiple times. That's good fortune. You know, all I can say is that if you do the groundwork and put your 
uh, project together with good groundwork, groundwork, and then learn to expect the unexpected. Or maybe stated another way, don't be surprised by the unexpected. Uh, I was able to sort of go with the flow, and maybe flow is a bad cho choice of words because my shirt was flowing with saliva. But if I was able to go with the flow and be patient enough to wait and photograph, capture this photograph, then maybe something good would happen. And as it turned out, uh, it was very good. So sometimes good fortune accompanies uh, a good foundation. Sometimes it's not so good, but you should be prepared whenever good fortune presents itself to you. I'll probably never go photograph giraffes again. Uh, I know vets at two different zoos in the U.S. because we did a photo project together once in Belize, and they both said they would have never let me in um, to their zoo to photograph animals, much less be up close and personal with the giraffe. So I was very fortunate to be able to do this in the Prague Zoo. So if you will keep in mind to put the good foundation together and then keep in the back of your mind, there's always the possibility uh, good fortune may present itself and be prepared uh, when it does. That's all I have to say about this particular image. Uh, it was a bit traumatic at the time uh, to have to go all the way back to where I was staying, covered in giraffe saliva, uh, but it was worth it. I'm glad that it worked out and this was a good image. Next time, I'm going to touch on a subject that's very dear to me. Uh, it's the, con uh, the concept of the decisive moment, which was Henri Cartier-Bresson's uh, premise so the next uh, photograph that I show, uh, post number 11, will be a photograph from France that is the best representation I have of the decisive moment. As always, I appreciate your attention. I appreciate your interest in what was going on in my head when I captured images, although not much was going on in my head with this particular photograph. Uh, thanks again, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.